and went out and bought a Caltech Sub 2000. Because why wouldn't you want a gun that folds in half that also takes Glock 17 mags, shoots 9mm, and has a bunch of rail on it? When you shot it, the buffer tube had to be jammed up under your cheekbone, and I always went home with a bruised cheek. Some of the components on it were a little bit cheesy, so I did what everybody should do. Went out and spent a whole bunch of money at M Carbo. I bought a metal takedown lever, a new trigger assembly, a rubber pad to go on the buffer tube, and I still didn't like shooting it. Take note of how comfortable that buffer tube looks as it rests between my nose and my cheekbone. And basically I got impatient and traded it in. So traded it in towards this guy. Traded in. So I took that gun to a gun shop and traded it in. You know, I'm really starting to think that my three middle names are glutton for punishment. Because I went out and got another Caltech Sub 2000. What? Yep, the recycled beach plastic foldy boy in 9mm. What the heck am I thinking here? I mean, look at this. What is this? It's a Glock 17 magazine. It's a Caltech. I mean, it's made in Florida. It's got the, you know, waffle cone looking grips and buttstock on this thing. Really, what am I thinking? Well, I mean, part of the reason I got another one was morbid curiosity. And right now, Caltech was running a $100 rebate promotion, so that doesn't hurt. But the morbid curiosity side is basically, when I had my other Caltech Sub 2000, I never quite took it to completion. And as Paul Harrell says, the what if brigade in my head was basically telling me I should try again. Now, the one that I traded in is long gone, so I needed to get all the goodies again. A new takedown lever and curved trigger. New stainless steel feed ramp, because the one that comes with this is plastic and eventually it's going to wear out. Safety clips in case I lose one. Enhanced rapid deployment latch that goes on the back of the gun so when it's folded up it's easier to unfold. Of course you need the two-finger charging handle because fiddly bits are always better when you can actually grip them. I got a screw kit that goes on the grip to replace the aluminum screws and the aluminum pins. I got a rubber buffer that goes behind the recoil spring and the bolt. And I got a, an extended magazine release. And I also got a Crimson Trace Red Dot because that was one thing that I never tried on my last one either. So getting back to talking about my kind of morbid curiosity about this, I was actually talking to one of my buddies a couple of weeks ago about how much I hated shooting this thing. And I went back on my channel and I put a playlist together of all the videos I had for the kel Sub 2000. Went through all the upgrades I did with it and stuff. And I realized that I really didn't give this thing a fair shake. One thing I always wanted to try when I had my kel Sub 2000 was putting a quick release rail with a red dot on top of it. So that you could easily pop it off, fold it up, and store the rail with the red dot on the bottom of the barrel. or possibly put a short piece of rail on the inside of the buttstock so you could store it there when it's folded up which would protect it quite a bit and I decided that because there was a hundred dollar rebate um, for the month of I think November to January or something like that that Caltech was giving away for these I was able to get this thing for a pretty good deal brand new I ended out paying I think 50 or 60 dollars less than the last one I bought because of the rebate and, um, you know, spending all the money on the M Carbo parts is kind of counterintuitive to saving money with the rebate, but it just softens the blow of spending the money on all the extra parts. So I don't really feel like I lost out much when I sold the other one. This one, I know what I needed to do better. I bought different parts from M Carbo this time around, mostly the same, but, um, just a couple of different parts on it. I made sure I bought the screw kit for the grip and everything like that. So when I put it back together, I'm not worried about the little aluminum screws that they put on it stripping out. And again, I bought a red dot for it this time. I'm a little bit more financially set than I was before, so I'm not too worried about spending the money on one again. And I really want to take the time to go through this thing and do what I wanted to do, putting a red dot with a removable rail, 
and putting all the other good components back on that I just showed in this video. So yes, it's kind of silly. Yes, it's kind of still a crappy gun, but I like the utility of it. I like the fact that it actually folds in half. It's a little bit easier to store than some of the other carbines. It may not be quite as accurate at 50 or 75 or 100 yards as my Ruger PC carbine, but one thing I can say about the first Sub-2000 I had, that thing would eat any ammo and it was very reliable. And I'm betting that this one is going to be the same. So once again, that's going to do it for another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews. Thanks for tuning in once again. Join me as I go down the path of upgrading this wonderful, awesome, high-quality gun. I say that a little bit tongue-in-cheek. I mean, they do run. They have a lifetime warranty. They're made in the U.S., so they can't be all that bad, right? So thank you for joining me. Thank you for liking my videos, subscribing, and commenting. Every one of you that makes a comment and adds to the algorithm pays me a few pennies more so I can keep making stupid decisions like this with one of the rifles of all time.